<laughs> What's up, guys? And today I'm gonna show you how to make funk like. Uh, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I really don't know how to pronounce that, so I'm just gonna call him Pearly. Uh, anyways, he is one of the biggest and greatest funk producers with over 56k followers on SoundCloud. Lots of people enjoy his music, but how is it actually done? I'm gonna cover this in four different sections. Samples, structure, drums and vocals. So, uh, let's go. Now, when it comes to samples that Perel uses, he doesn't really have a set style but most of them are more to the chill, smooth, lo-fi side. Finding samples is mostly about patience, and if you're really picky like me, then you sit for hours until you find one that you like. Here are some keywords and artists you could search on YouTube that fit his style. So you could screenshot this and search on YouTube for like YouTube playlists and similar artists. And you will eventually find one that's good. And also, well, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. If you don't have the patience to sit for several hours to find samples, then you probably shouldn't be making funk. So make sure you're willing to do this because it's always worth it. Once you've found the sample, you need to find the key of the sample. And if you don't have a lot of knowledge about music theory, then you can use key finders in order to tune your 808s correctly. There are three websites and one program I use for this. They are not perfect, so to get the correct key, use all four of them and use process of elimination. Let's say this one says F minor, this one says G major, this one says it's A major, and this one says F minor. Then it's probably an F minor, because two of them said that. When you've found out the key, uh, you can drag it in your DAW. The sample I chose for this video is this one. Pirelli's tracks all have a very full sound with quite a lot of things going on. So I'm gonna show some stuff you could do to fill out the mix. Uh, this right here is something I do in all my tracks. I clone the original sample and I pitch it down 12 semitones uh, to fill out the low end. And this makes it so that every, like every frequency in the spectrum gets filled out. And yeah, so on this lower one, I just cut all the high end because the original sample already has, has those frequencies. And also on the original sample, you could add a reverb and some stereo imaging. So it fills out. Also, another thing you can do is add these drum loops. Uh, in the background of the drop and how I do that is I add a reverb to it I turn this dry knob down and this wet knob up so it's like really wet and it's kind of sitting in the background of the drop and just creates a uh, full sound the reason you want to have them in the background is because you want to have your snare and the hats and the kick at the front and these just hanging out in the background so it just uh, fills the mix basically. Now if we go back to the actual structure, there's usually an intro for like 8 to 16 bars uh, and then there's a beat for like 8 to 16 bars and then the vocal comes in on the drop. And in the intro he usually has some kind of pre-drop vocal or wh whatever you want to call it. And it's like usually movie quotes or someone uh, saying something. Hey man, be careful on that man. I think I'm seeing shit man. Hey. Okay, open the door. Let's take a swing at the motherfuckers. Now to find these quotes, there are a few ways. I usually go on YouTube and search for like a hood interview. And you can see all of these 
videos right here. This guy, Charlie Bo313, has good videos for this. You could like skim through them and see if you find some something nice that they say. And another thing is this website right here called subsin.com. Basically, it's a website to find quotes in movies. And uh, what it does is that when you search for a word, it searches up quotes and it gives you the timestamp like in the movie. And you could download the movie and uh, record the quote. For example, like let's just search good weed or something. <laughs> I don't fucking know. And as you can see here, there's the timestamp and then there's the quote. And this is the one I chose for this beat. Uh, I downloaded this movie and uh, I recorded it. And here's the here's the clip. You want to smoke a joint? What? Yeah, you must have been reading my mind. What about if we sit inside yeah, and sure. shoot? Please, let's do it. Now the 808s that Pirelli uses, uh, they're usually pretty long with uh, with a fading tail like this. This makes it so that it creates a lot more impact when the next kick hits. Another thing you can do to make it more interesting is that you switch up the patterns like as the song progresses. So basically I have this main one right here. And then what you can do is that you can make it unique. And then you can go here and like add more notes or whatever. So you could like create slide notes here and there, add some high notes right here. The kicks that Pirelli uses are uh, usually clicky and have a lot of high end. There's a lot of packs where you can get these kinds of kicks, but this is the one I chose. And another thing you can do to make it more present in the mix is that you turn the kick mixer channel all the way up, and then you add a soft clipper on the master so that it makes it really loud but still keeps it below 0 dB. And this is something that most funk producers uh, use, and this is something you can do to really achieve that funk sound. Another thing you can do to get more bounce to the track and give the kick even more presence in the mix, you can add a sidechain. Now there are many ways to do this, but the way I do this is that I have the kick at insert 2, then I have a sidechain bus at insert 1, and then what you do is uh, you select the kick channel, and then you right click this ar little arrow right here, and you click sidechain to this track. And then you go on the sidechain bus, and then you add a limiter, and then you go to this comp section right here. You right click the sidechain section right here and then you click insert to the, the kick channel. And then these are the settings that I usually use and they're pretty low and the, the reason why I do that is because the kick is already really loud. And to get every sound sidechain to this kick, you want to select everything except the, the drums. You want to select the sound and you want to route to this track only to the sidechain bus. And also the same as we did with the 808, you want to add more and more variation uh, throughout the track and add more kicks. <laughs> For hats, you want to use this classic pattern right here. You know, nothing too special. And you could layer them like this to make it loud. And something he does is that in some parts of the track, he likes to pitch them down and pound them a little bit. So I did this. This little triplet thing. And this one is panned to the right. And you already know, just add more and more, some rolls here and there later in the track. For percussion, Prelly usually goes crazy on this and has random percussions everywhere and has them panned to the left and right and then some snares and off beats and whatnot. So I made this. Yeah, so here I have uh, this one's pan to the left and this one's pan to the right. And then this little shaker thing, I have it moved from left to right. And there's some really classic perks from Prelly, it's this one. 
then he usually has these cowbells at the end of every eight bar. So yeah, just add percussions here and there and like pan them and add reverb and you know, makes the track really enjoyable overall. And also you wanna have drum fills like before the drop or somewhere in the drop too to create more impact. So I have this. Let's do it. And a thing I do with drum fills is that I add a reverb, like a reverb going up like this. How I do is that I, I add a reverb, like a really big reverb. It's a lot of decay and a lot of wet. And I automate the, the mix level of the reverb and I have it go up right before the drop hits. Then it mutes on the drop. Let's do it. For vocals, uh, Prelease is usually like a verse from a modern day rap song. So you could go on YouTube and search for acapellas for like whatever artists you like. But most of these have been used already. So I, I usually don't do this. So what I do is that I go on like world star hip hop or something and I go on the, their channel and then I listen through these. And if I find something that I like, I make an acapella out of it. The vocals I want to use for this beat is uh, this one called OTA by YSN. Yeah, I'm not going to play too much because I'm probably get copyright claimed. But uh, if you want to make an acapella, you can just download the song. And then you go on this website called vocalremover.org. And then you drag the sample in. Then it's going to create an acapella. And yeah, after a few minutes, it's going to create an acapella and you can just download it. And when you're doing this method, you usually want to use a song that has really clear vocals because it's an AI. You basically want the vocals to be as clear as possible. So yeah, the acapella sounds like this, and this is the part I want to use. You just want to fit this one to the tempo of the beat. So for mixing the vocals on the sample, you want to cut some of the high end to leave room for the vocals. And for mixing on the actual vocals, you want to cut the bass, and then you want to cut this like really, really high end. And the reason you want to do this is because on these isolated vocals, the S's and like the hats are really loud and like kind of hurts your ear. So you want to cut those off. And yeah, another thing he does when he wants to introduce the vocals is this. So yeah, when the vocal comes in, he likes to mute the drums and the 808 and just have the crash. And then when the snare hits again, uh, the beat drops again. Yeah, so that's a really good way to get the pearly sound. But uh, yeah, this is basically it. And this is the final beat. Must have been reading my mind. What about if we sit inside yeah, and sure? Please, let's do it. So yeah, 
Let me know what you guys think of this video. Give me some feedback in the comments or shoot me a DM or whatever. All of the stuff I used in this video will be in the description, including the FOP. Uh, my next video is gonna be about Roland Jones, so stay tuned for that. Listen to my new EP, Smoked Up, on SoundCloud, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. Peace.